אני יודע שזה מקרר חדש, מובן שזה מקרר חדש, בגלל זה זה עוקל. Keep it going for these guys. That's a trailer. That's an amazing trailer, guys. I mean, I feel like that's when it, the movie really feels like it's real. I mean, what was it like when you first saw the trailer? Were you getting a sneak peek at it first, or did Udi just send you, uh, you know, the final draft? I'm sorry for you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, actually, uh, he just sent it to me. Uh, you know, it's not a dictatorship. It's a matter of trust, and we trust his taste, of course, and uh, his work. And I was very happy that the, that the, that the trailer have that fast BPM of hip hop the way I like it. How about you, Samar? Yeah, same, same thing. I just saw it, and I, I love it. <laughs> and, and question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love this movie so much, and I think the opening scene just kicks it off in just the right way. Did you always envision it starting off that way? I'll start with you, Udi. Uh, I think that what we knew is the opening scene and the last scene. Mm. Everything in the middle is a surprise for us. But we, we, we sticked with the opening and with the end, and it was cool. And the middle grew organic from those two tensions there. Mm. And we were very happy with this opening scene. And then we came out, and the movie, we, we felt like we are straight out of Palestine because the opening <laughs> film of... Uh, straight out of Compton. Yeah, it was also, you remember, they come. It yeah. reminds us a little bit the same scene, so it was weird that we were shooting in the same time, kind of the same scene, one here and one in red. Mm. And you guys had worked together on a film before. Can you explain a little bit about how you got to know each other and how this movie came to be? Um, <clears throat> it was many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I used to live here in uh, when September 11 happened, mm. and after it, I really felt that maybe it's time to go back home and try to understand the roots of all this. Uh, you know, state terrorism, other terrorism, uh, who, where is the foundation of uh, this hate? Mm. And I came back to Palestine, Israel, and I met people after people. I visited German Arafat when he was in curfew in the occupied territory. I met other people, and I felt that I know their answer. Mm. And then one friend of mine told me, and I, I got bored in a way, <laughs> Somebody told me, listen, there is this young kid that just starting a whole scene of a uh, Palestinian hip hop and his word and his energy is different. He's offering something new. So I came with my crew to meet Tamer and he used to look amazing then. He was 23 years old, right? <laughs> now he's just look great. <laughs> and it was a love in the first sight. He was so fresh and surprising and the right rhythm and I felt that I find the uh, soul I was in a not way. anymore I'm just <laughs> but now we can fake it we have the cameras and mm -hmm. but uh, it was really so this was my film local angel a documentary it was when I moved from being a visual artist to a filmmaker mm -hmm. and we did uh, it was very inspiring for us and for other people who saw it and from this moment on I think Tamer and me developed together 
a lot of this language of binationalism of uh, Jews and Palestinians can work together with respect to the oppressed, not doing dialogue, but being solidarity with the oppressed, with Palestinians, with women. Mm -hmm. And we were together trying to develop art, uh, high art also, because high art is also mean of resistance. Mm -hmm. And we did other more films, and I was holding the projector for him in some shows, and he came to other films of mine. And right now we are doing well, but it was mm. a long struggle to try to change the world, and the world became worse. <laughs> uh, Tamar, I mean, obviously your music was a passion of yours. This story is very connected to your, your own past. I mean, tell me a little bit about putting it on page, obviously working with uh, the fantastic Oren Moverman, who's you know, incredible. What was that process like for you? to remember that? It, it's more inspired of than it's based on. Yeah. Because yes, there's a lot of true events, but uh, during the writing and the brainstorming, uh, I think we, as artists, uh, we thought that cinema is more beautiful uh, than uh, uh, real life. It's not a documentary. Yeah. And working with Oren was, um, for me, it was um, a, a school. And it's like, it's like being part of a school and college without paying for it. Yeah. It was just, being awesome, the way we sell, with the way we used to send them things, and he used to uh, reply. Uh, we used to send them, for example, stories and ideas, and he used to send us a movie, cinema, and that's. Uh, yes, we write words and stuff. Uh, it's ink and everything, and it's on email. But when he send it back, you can actually see the visual and smell, uh, and actually smell the gunpowder from the movie, and that was amazing. That's for me was cinema, and that was. Uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to work with to work with these two, three. Some are Udi and Oren, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Samar, I mean, when, had you been familiar with his music before or did you find it later? And what did you think of the script? And yeah, there we go, some real there talk. There we go, yeah. She wasn't a big fan. She wasn't a big Tell the story. Just we can be honest here. <laughs> no, it was. That's, uh, it took me some time to, uh, to get used to it. 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I actually, yeah, I, I listened to Tamar's music since I was, uh, I don't want to say kid because you're not that older than me, but, but yeah, since I was in school, in high school, and it was very popular, but it changed with time, it, it got much better, and uh, all of a sudden I found myself inside of this film uh, making music and singing, and I had something that I've never done before, and uh, <clears throat> well, I couldn't do rap. It's uh, I think I, I always thought that rap is something that yeah, it's like talking, but it's much more difficult than than you what I thought. You are in New York. And watch it. <laughs> hmm? You are in New York, so watch it when you say. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Sometimes you don't appreciate stuff un unless you're inside into it and you try to do it and you understand how you you more to, you know how to appreciate it much more and. I think that it's uh, it was a big pleasure for me to be a part of this film as uh, as I also taught to sing and it's a new thing for me and and all, all of a sudden I found myself uh, performing in uh, in New York and in Berlin and in Slovakia and in Odessa and uh, with the band with the, the group of uh, Junction 48 and it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I really I want to say something on Summer. She really started as a, I mean she's still but I, I brought her in as a young brilliant uh, student that writing a script and she came as my assistant mm. as somebody who have a beautiful Arabic and beautiful Hebrew and felt the feminist language within the film. Mm. So really she was my my ad there. And her insight was so beautiful to the script. What I didn't realize is that she totally fell in love with the creature we're creating in the script, with Manar. Mm. And one day, she just, in the middle that she calling other women for audition, mm. she told me, hey, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> uh, and this is also, she have this, co co it's very courageous, you know, because really I brought her in as, as a brain, not as a person who'd be in front of the, stage and I think this combination of have such a feminist sensitivity and being there and moving between the languages and then move to the front mm -hmm. and be this woman that starting as like this good looking girlfriend of a hip hop uh, singer and ending like the person that really the most courageous person on the in the film mm -hmm. you have to have a person that have a very large uh, possibilities of character so I think that for Tamar and me, that we started it before, it was beautiful to welcome her into to this gang. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, round of applause for that, absolutely. Um,
as you mentioned, it, it played at Berlin, it played here at Tribeca, th in New York at the Film Festival. And what's it been like seeing it on the big... It won Berlin. Yeah, Audience Award, exactly. Yeah, absolutely, it did win, <laughs> absolutely. No. First we'll take Manhattan, then we'll take Berlin. We there did we that the other way around. We, first we took Berlin, then we took Manhattan. I love it. And, and now it's coming into theaters here in New York and in L.A. and Lincoln Center, which is a beautiful theater. I mean, tell Lincoln me... Lincoln Plaza. Yeah, Lincoln. Yeah, exactly, Lincoln Plaza. Um, I want everyone yeah. to go to see the I, film. Everyone needs to go. Because I want everyone to go to see the film. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like watching this on a big screen. I can vouch for that. I mean, what's it been like watching it on the big screen for you guys? Um, um, amazing. Can I just say that it's, it's stunning. It's a. Uh, uh, it just at the beginning you think it's a one 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 time life experience, uh, and then you say no, that's something that I want to do all my life. And uh, I think it's ama it's amazing. It's really hard. Uh, <clears throat> it's amazing, especially where we come from, just to come and 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 to come from a hard place and and uh, and do something out of nothing and just put it out in the world. And I'm 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 I use that same example now because I'm in New York. I would have known nothing. Honestly, I would have known nothing about African Americans. I would have known nothing, which is the culture that changed my life somehow. I would have known nothing if it wasn't for this guy called Tupac. Uh, if, if, if it wasn't for this guy called Biggie, or, or I've seen the photo of Common Sense over there, so I would have known nothing without these guys. So I feel somehow that it's, it's, it's an honor for me to have that opportunity and privilege to come and expose my culture to the same people who exposed me to their culture. So I just, I'm, I'm just happy and thrilled, and I just hope that... Um, uh, you know, it's beyond, uh, for me, it's beyond beyond the Statue of Liberty or Trump. Or it's just for me coming to exchange cultures the same way, which is the mo the basics of this place is music for me. And, and I'm very privileged to come and, and, and to have that opportunity to pay it back. That's uh, yeah, Absolutely. How about you guys? Uh, I feel that for us in this time to be here, it's even different than before. Because we grew up, we try to do high art. It's very important because we claim that high art is a mean of resistance. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that activists just have to do things that look bad, the opposite. Mm -hmm. But we also, we are part, we feel it's almost like a film that's uh, part of this new resistance. Because mm -hmm. what happened now here, it's not by coincidence that uh, Black Lives Matter are supporting in solidarity with the Palestinian people. There is, there is a place of what is to be oppressed and not to be, and to speak it through, in one hand, very particular language, to speak about Palestine, Lud, the food we eat, like very careful, but in the other hand, hip hop, youth that try to fight for freedom, for that women rights should be together with uh, civil rights, with uh, race rights, that you cannot speak about the one without the other. And, uh, Showing it on big screen, it's not only this was the issue. Seeing it in first time in Berlin, when 1,000 people in the audience, mm. it's a very unique moment because you, it's first time Tamar and me, when we all sitting there, and I had this surprise there for him that I dedicate the film to my mom and his father. My mom was the biggest civil rights uh, uh, fighter in Israel, really an amazing woman, and his father... Not as an activist, but as part of the government, she was... She yeah. was in yeah. a while, yes, in yeah, but she created, yeah. she fought for gay rights in Israel before they knew they are gays, then she fought for the Palestinian, when she, she was really in the whole women's rights discourse. And Tamer father that I met in this day when I came, he's a really amazing person because we grew up there, they grew up in the really hard ghetto, the drugs and the fighting and the shooting, and Tamer really lost friends in drug wars. And his father was so amazing, a person that in one hand voting for the Communist Party and prayed the Quran and keep the values of both things, of uh, universality and his faith together and keep Tamer and create, bring him to be what he is in this hood. And right now he's the leader of a whole movement of uh, new Palestinians that fight for freedom, fight for women's rights, fight for equality. A lot is because of this father, and to see the name of his father and my mom in front of this audience, and they uh, really, they got us. It was, there is a reason why we got the price. It was really the price of the people, of, of this place that we felt connected, that we're offering something that people want to hear. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And, and Tamar, I mean, tell me a little bit about, you know, you, you love music. You love to create music. Um, you start making movies. I'm sure you never expected your trajectory to be into political activism or anything like that. Can, 
did you see this for your um, for your present now? Is, was there any point where you saw that it was changing in a dramatic way? I think that we're living in a time where um, you don't have that choice. I cannot be. Uh, it's just I cannot be a woman. Yeah, uh, when when I cannot be a woman, I would like to. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I cannot be a woman. Yeah, it would be weird if I just stopped. I cannot be a woman. No, I cannot be a woman right. on the times where Trump says gross things and say, I don't want to be political. It's, it's, uh, I cannot be a, a Palestinian while house demolitions are being happening and the occupation is continued and say, I don't want to be political. Uh, um, as much as it's... I'm going to use the last song in, in, the, in the movie. It's called... Uh, I always mistake it. Do you say only if or if only? If only, I think it's if, if only, only. sorry. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, the, what, that's what Karim, the main character, is saying. If only, uh, I wish I can write you love songs uh, full of cliches. I wish I can uh, describe a kiss under the rain, but I hate the rain. It's traumatic. It reminds me of our leaking roof. It goes back to poverty. So it's, it's hard for us not to be political. Um, um, <clears throat> and it's not fun to be political, but I think that we live in a world where, where politicians are messing up and uh, and they are ruining everything. They are holding the, our presence and our children as hostages. Uh, and it will be a bit bullshit to say, I don't want to step in and just take control. So yes, I want to be political. Most 100% I want to be political. When people, when we have the era of Bibi, when we have the era of ISIS, when we have the era of Assad, when, when we have the era of Bush doesn't care about black people or Trump doesn't care about people at all. So yes, I would like to step in and be political, yeah. That's a great, I, I want that song. That was a, a good beat, line, you know, actually. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Here's, here's a Send rhythm. Send to us, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah. come on the next record. Yeah, yeah we'll <laughs> put a beat below that, that'll be amazing. Um, Samar, I want to get to you, and obviously your character, there's a lot of issues there as well. Um, you know, feminism, uh, the mention of honor killings, or sort of the insinuation there. I mean, are you, are you mysticized, or are you surprised at how little people really know about the culture? I mean, we hear certain headlines through our sort of mass media, but we're not really getting the full picture of these people. I mean, what's been that experience uh, rolling that out? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's very important for me to, to like all the screenings around the world, it was, uh, I met women from all over the world who came to see the film, and each woman in every single place in the world connected to, to Manar and to, to the issue of Manar and from different angles. So I cannot say that it's something, and I refuse to say that it's something that is uh, only in the Palestinian society or in the Arab society because it's conservative. I mean, we have honor killing, or we refuse even to call it honor killing. We have killing, and other societies have... Uh, um, Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as <Duh>. president. <laughs> so I think it's something uh, universal, but it's different from um, uh, one society to another according to traditions and other stuff. But for me, it was very important to give this voice of, of the woman in, uh, uh, to bring the other woman, that the woman that we don't usually see in Palestinian, oh, in films, uh, usually, because Palestinian women are usually, we see them through the Israeli films, uh, they are usually weak, they are usually have no voice, they usually have uh, no existence, they usually are the, um, attached to something or to a subject. And, and here we see Manar and we see the mother of Karim and they are different and they have voices and they are actually affecting everything that's happening on underneath. Like they, they, are, not, um, they are not the usual stereotype we used to see. And I think, I think that's why I felt most connected to this role, because it talks a lot about the new generation who, who wants to fight against, uh, a lot, to criticize its society, but it's also a church, it's, its society, because we have a lot of stuff that we respect and we want to keep, but we also, uh, w I mean, whatever uh, criticism we, we bring here is, is out of, uh, of the vision of a better future, of, of the vision that, here we do have uh, another type of woman that you don't want to see, the world they want to see, the occupation that want to see, the, uh, the chauvinist world that don't want to see. So I think that uh, this role um, brought a lot of different aspects that um, every woman around the world can, I feel like they can feel connected to, I hope. I just want to add, it's not so much a type because we have different kind of women in the films. And the other one that's very important for us 
that have a sisterhood with uh, Manar, with Samar, is the mother of Karim. And it was very important because she is a religious woman, a Muslim woman, because sometimes some people here, they try to say, no, we, we are not against Arab, but just let them be secular, as secularism is progress and uh, religion is uh, primitive. And it was very important to show that in this discourse, the difference is not between, because with all the respect, you know, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, they were religious people. And some of the secular people, is like people like Bibi Netanyahu or other fascists that control the world. So the difference is not there. So we try to create relationship between independent women, women who go in one way, and also the mother of Karim, that she's a Muslim healer. And in the end, both of them have a true band because the sisterhood is stronger than where they put you in culture things. So I think this was, was very important not to play, to be nice for the white fox in the West to enjoy, oh, look, they're so cool, they're secular. No, they are all together as a culture is what's interesting. Yeah. And uh, Tamara, your music is so great throughout the film. I mean, tell me, you know, now that it's coming to the States and it's playing Yeah, it's so my music and Itamar Ziegler, the producer. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, now that it's getting exposed to the States, have you thought about collaborating with anybody? I think in the States, I think that would be amazing. You know, have there, has anybody reached out? Have you tried to... I'm thinking list, of yeah. collaborating with uh, either Jay-Z or Kanye, but I, I need to check my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, y'all can get the music through uh, uh, iTunes now, through The Orchard. Thank you to The Orchard. Um, and now, yes, uh, with this movie, it's going to be a jump off to uh, do some English stuff. How uh, somehow we are creating a new language where it's in between Arabic accent and English words and Arabic words creating a new word. And yes, I would like to collaborate. I would love to collaborate. You know, we've done things before with uh, uh, we, we have songs with the Manu Chao. Uh, uh, um, with Mumford and Sons. Uh, Mumford and Sons. Absolutely. Of yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, um, as I said, I'm, I'm here to, to I'm here to expose my culture. You refuse oh. to sing with me. Well, uh, I'll still look out for that. I guess we have some questions in the audience. We're going to start right here. Uli, um, at the very beginning, you said that uh, you had went after 9-11 overseas, back to overseas. You went to overseas to uh, find the out, the, after 9-11, after to find out the foundation of what state, uh, state-sponsored terrorism and things like that. Did you find an answer on that journey, or are you still, is it still going on, or are you still looking for that answer with everything still going on today? It's a good question. I want to say I didn't find an answer, but I found a great friendship, you know, <laughs> so sometimes... For the journey a, to the answer. But um, I think that what go, it's part I went with thinking with a very dear philosopher of mine died, uh, Walter Benjamin, that commits suicide, tried to run away from the Nazis, and he has a very humble thinking about uh, be careful from progress. Think where where the weakness can create an opening for messianic moment. And I think that really this half joke I found, friend, this is really what I found. I feel that the flood is so huge and so terrible and we don't have the power right now to fight Trump and Bibi and Putin and Arduan that changed for the worst and uh, Assad. You know, suddenly our spring became a winter, and your winter became worst winter. And <laughs> and uh, but what we find, if I use winter, that in this flood we feel that we create the Noah Ark. We inviting people to our Ark to to create this new language of equality of peace. When we see in the march here a woman like Linda Sarsour, that a uh, million of women follow a uh, origin Palestinian woman with hijab that fight for for human rights. For us, we find another person, an, another Noah Ark in this flood that we wave to each other. And when they, hopefully, with their perversion, they will destroy themselves, at least we'll be able to offer a better language or a better place for us. So it's pessimistic because we are in the middle of the flood, but it's optimistic because at least in the, in the Ark, we have a brotherhood and sisterhood. Well said. Um, next question right there. Hello. This question is for each of you. I wanted to know what song or album would you use to describe the world we're living in today? To describe the what? The world we're living in now. Oh, it's a wonderful world. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
uh, which song would you pick or an album? It's an amazing question. Which song would you pick or, or an album to describe this world? So according to the Mexican, I would go with Pink Floyd, The Wall. Mm. I would go to this with, with this one. It's, it's, I'm sorry it's one-on-one, -on -one, mm. but sometimes we don't have a choice. Uh, I'll let them answer and I think of something more complicated and more uh, metaphoric than The Wall. <laughs> Oh, say Junction 48. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously the Junction 48 <laughs> album for one, but uh, yeah. That's a tough question. Um, That's a tough question. So I've been five answering, minutes. Uh, I've been answering, really, I've been doing Q&As uh, with music or the, uh, since. It's, I think that's, thank you for that question. It reminds <laughs> me that I'm an artist. And, no, it reminds me that I'm an artist and yeah. a politician. <laughs> that I'm between both worlds. I can answer. F I can ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. Question 48, whole album, I think. <laughs> they'll, they'll think of something maybe after the next question, but we'll get into the next question. Because, uh, because this Probably system. Two hours, I wake up. Oh, no, whoa, I I'll have go with that. another one. <laughs> Uh, because we are living in a world where we are trying to be artists and, uh, against this big bad robot, uh, so I'll go also with the last uh, Kendrick uh, to pimp a butterfly. Uh, that's what I. That's Maybe I want to say when uh, when I heard Nina Simone doing feeling, you saw mm -hmm. this. Maybe it, I know it doesn't sound political, but they said like, what a situation is that somebody have to admit these words. Yeah. Maybe this feeling that you have to write songs that you shouldn't write in a way because it's portraying which situation you are. Yeah. So maybe I'll go for Nina Simone feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer, absolutely. Great answer. One last question uh, right there. Hi. Um, I really liked your message about Noah's Ark and like feeling like you have, I don't know, you talked about Linda Sarsour too and like feeling a sense of solidarity with people who are fighting back here. And I just wanted to ask, when you see movements, like protest movements, all across, not even the US, like all across the world, what does that feel like since, I mean, you've made such a political work. Like, what does it feel like to see people, do you feel solidarity with those protest movements? Like, what is that like to watch? First, we feel we are not alone, and that's very optimistic and very powerful, uh, and it's, it's encouraging, and it's a fuel. So that's, because we really feel down sometimes with the world. And sometimes when we feel, when you see, I don't think that, opt for, for me, optimism is not a pink world and it's not uh, a place where you have butterflies. And for me, optimism is resistance. When I see resistance, I know that there's good in the world. So even if it's all ruined and I see still people fighting, like Manar at the end of the movie where she decides, I don't want, no, that's a twist. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, when you see, Yes, I'm very sad with the voting and uh, and the people went uh, with Trump and not Bernie Sanders, for example. Uh, but to see the resistance of Rinda Sarsour and a Angela Davis and all that, that gives me hope. Uh, resistance is hope for me. So. Um, I have really mixed feeling on it. I'm really involved. I was shooting a film in the with the Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front that it's a very important and interesting movement. And I saw how they were crushed by the, by the Indian and the Pakistani together. I saw how people separate, like in Pakistan and India, for no reason they split between the Hindu and the Muslims. When Kashmir tried to keep together the Muslim and the Pandit, those two forces didn't allow it. I felt how it's happened in Palestine, Israel, that like Edward Said offered us, there's no reason for us to live together, and how so many forces crashed this possibility. So, and I was in Taksim, I was in Taksim Square, and I remember what optimizing, I was screening a film with uh, my best friend, the late Juliano Melchamis, he was working in a Janine refugee camp in Matzrach uh, el in a freedom theater, and he was murdered in the front of the theater, he, he made, so I have also a lot of scars in me. So being in moments that I felt that I'm in a movement and it's fall apart. But then I think about my late, my mother, the late Shulamit Aloni, that this woman fight by herself as a woman for women rights, for the weak rights. And each time, each time she, she lost, she get up again to this fight and and for me to know that I can remember this mother is a big victory. And I think that even if we lose, lose a lot of fight, if the true Karim, the son of Tamer, will know the fights that Tamer did in his life, it's keep a continuity. 
And that's really what keep me working. And of course, we are in solidarity. You know, we, we had even a movement in Israel that called the Black Panther. We use, we use text, uh, we use other texts from other movements of resistance to influence each other. But somehow, the oppressor, the global capitalism, find a way to work as one unit. And we don't find this way. We, the civil society, we are so split, we criticize each other. If somebody said the wrong word, ah, oh, you make my mistake, you said black instead of this, you are out. You said Jew instead of this, you are out. We don't have grace. And I want to offer something as radical grace, that we'll be radicals, we'll fight the fight, but we'll be graceful to each other as a civil society. And maybe we can create a force that will fight this global capitalism that really destroyed us all, all over the world. Beautifully said. Um, absolutely, a round of applause for that. Now guys, Junction 48 is a powerful but a very entertaining film that you should see, see in theaters, New York and LA, and uh, one more round of applause for these guys. Thank you so much.